G20 summit in which the heads of states and governments would meet on 9th and 10th of September will be held in uh, the national capital. Over 25 world leaders along with other delegates are going to attend this mega event. Republic spoke with the G20 chief coordinator Harshvardhan Shringla. Here's an exclusive conversation ahead of the G20 summit. We are already in the final week going into the G20 leaders summit. It has been uh, a tremendous uh, experience learning curve for India's uh, diplomatic core as also of course for the rest of the nation to watch India on the global committee of nations at the high table. As we go into the leaders summit, let's try to understand what have we seen all through this year of India G20 presidency with none other than uh, chief coordinator of the G20 secretariat, Mr. Harshwardhan Singla, former foreign secretary of India as well. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Your, Thank you. your lessons you have taken, the experience, and uh, generally speaking, uh, how has India handled the G20 presidency? Well, uh, when you talk about lessons and experience, uh, they, they probably aren't that many because it's the first time we are hosting a G20 presidency. So there's no copy book that we can go by. But what is important is that uh, we have started preparations well before. Well before we even began our presidency last year, um, we um, set up the secretariat. We started planning and preparing for this eventuality. We consulted previous presidencies, Saudi Arabia, Italy, Indonesia. We got a lot of um, information and inputs from them. And, uh, but we were very clear right from the beginning uh, that the Prime Minister's vision was to host an impeccable and uniquely Indian presidency. And that was uh, our focus throughout. So as you've seen, I mean, our endeavor has been to not only make it uh, a successful exercise in terms of the G20 itself, but to ensure that this is uh, one that, uh, is, uh, that involves uh, all of our citizens, uh, that this uh, um, creates uh, stakeholders uh, at the grassroots levels, uh, takes everybody along with that process. So it's been an inclusive and all-encompassing exercise from that point of view. So if you, could, if you could give one or two examples of the differentiator between India's presidency of G20 and the others. Well, I think the first factor is that uh, we have taken G20 to every part of our country. Uh, we are not only the largest democracy in the world, we are also the mother of democracy. So it's incumbent on us to ensure that uh, when we host such an important exercise, that this is not a remote exercise handled by some people. It is an exercise that belongs to the entire country. And it's in that endeavor, I think, that the Prime Minister envisioned that the G20, uh, the G20 meeting should be held in every state, in every union territory of India. That means the length and breadth of India has been covered. Wherever we've hosted G20 meetings, the people of that area have been very, very uh, integrally involved with that process through side events, a number of uh, other Jan Bhagedari events around it. So, as I said, we, the endeavor has, to made, has been to make every citizen a stakeholder in the process. And through the Jan Bhagidari process of involving students, involving quiz competitions, selfie competitions, festivals, take it to the grassroots levels. Right. So today when we talk about our logo, we talk about our theme of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, um, it is uh, one that every person can identify with. Right. I mean, take our uh, logo for example. In the beginning, uh, people used to ask us, can we use the logo for a, for a certain conference, for, our, for a certain session? Uh, but after after some time, it became so popular that it, it was seen all over the country. You know, you could see it in shopping malls. You could see it in by used by auto rickshaw drivers. Uh, we had we reached a situation where um, you know prominent companies approached us to use the logo in their products itself. So I think it has become a ubiquitous brand. It yeah. has become a brand. Yeah. G20 India has become a brand, not only in our country, but it's become an international brand. Right. And so we, what has been unique in our presidency, that was your question, is that we have made G20 a people's G20. Uh, we, have take, we have certainly uh, included uh, uh, cities of our country that have never hosted an international event before. So right. close to 60 cities right. uh, have been host to G20 meetings. We've hosted close to 200 meetings so far. Uh, and I can safely say that many of the places that we traveled to to arrange the meetings 
really uh, had no experience of any uh, major conferences, even on international conferences of this nature. Right. But they all put their best foot forward. Right. Uh, whether it's states, whether it's union territories, municipalities, districts, everybody came forward. Right. It is the best example in my view as someone who organized it on the ground of uh, cooperative federalism. All right. So any numbers to back up the people's presidency, like how many students were involved, universities, campuses, municipalities, something like that? And so just also, to, yeah. also, also, uh, when you say it traveled across the country, uh, was it without any bias to which state has which government in power? So, uh, this, that's an, that's an important point, that every state, irrespective of their political affiliations, uh, was the host of some G, one G20 meeting or the other. And every state, whether they were, uh, you know, affiliated with the government or were in opposition, came forward. Uh, in a manner that, as I said, uh, they wanted to use the opportunity to put the best of their country and the best of that state uh, to uh, the international delegates who were coming. And uh, we got uh, fullest cooperation from every state uh, in India. You recall that uh, Prime Minister had, uh, as soon as we took over the presidency, addressed uh, governors and chief ministers of right. states. Right. Uh, and at that time, he said, this is a unique opportunity for you to showcase the best in terms of our cultural heritage and uh, diversity. Uh, and so it's for states to provide uh, the support necessary. And I can tell you, having traveled to a very large number of states uh, to meet uh, the concerned stakeholders, chief ministers, chief secretaries, officials, others, uh, I think uh, <coughs> we received the fullest support and cooperation. Right. And without that cooperation in our federal structure, we could never have made this uh, presidency such a successful one. Right. Since it's a diplomatic exercise, uh, there has been subtle diplomatic messaging also involved, for example, holding an event in Srinagar in Kashmir or Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, how was it seen by the rest of the membership of G20? So uh, take Srinagar, for example. I think we had excellent turnout and participation of the international delegates. There were actually five UN organizations that attended that meeting. Um, you know, the UN itself, the UN uh, World Tourism Organization, UNEP. Uh, so uh, you had uh, a plethora of UN agencies that came. Um, we, I think, uh, were able to uh, get uh, a very large participation, not only um, from within our stakeholders within the country, but also internationally, as I said. And uh, it was very greatly appreciated by uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir themselves who realized that this was a unique opportunity for them. Yeah. Uh, and many people also commented that they had never ever seen an international event of this nature. This is the largest event ever hosted in Srinagar in their history. And, uh, and I think people also associated it with many of the positive changes in the urban sector. You know, there was an urban transformation. It was a smart city. The Jhelum riverfront was completely redone. The Dal Lake was cleaned. The entire area was absolutely beautiful. And I had been there six months before that, and I've seen the changes that have been brought in. And these changes will stay well beyond the G20. So right. they're, they're changes that will be there to stay. Right. And so people said, let's have more of such events. Let's have more G20 events uh, in, in Srinagar. And I think so, it was a game changer uh, in many uh, senses. Arunachal as well? Arunachal as well. I think right from the chief minister down to every person was associated. Uh, all of the you know cultural diversity of Arunachal Pradesh was there for our visitors and guests to see. It was a fascinating uh, you know glimpse into a part of our country that uh, you know unfortunately not uh, enough of us have been to. Right. So if you have to mark out two things, which rest of the world, while observing India's G20 presidency, uh, can look at important takeaways. Well, I think first and foremost our philosophical uh, vision of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. Right. One earth, one family, one future. The entire premise rests not only uh, from you know ancient times where we use this concept to engage holistically uh, with, uh, with the rest of the world, but also in today's context, uh, you know, the philosophy drives our foreign policy, drives our external engagement. Yeah. So when we talk about working for the global common good, we are the pharmacy of the world. During COVID times, we provide medicines to the rest of the world. We provided under vaccine Maitri, Indian-made vaccines to the rest of the world. We are also looking, we are also providing our expertise and experience in digital public infrastructure. India Stack, for example. 
renewable energy yes. through the International Solar Alliance and the CDRI. Now, when we look at that, uh, I think we are very conscious of the fact that we work towards the global common good. So that concept, and I'll digress for just a second. Yeah, yeah. In, in, when the Saudi Arabians hosted a summit, an extraordinary summit during COVID, and Prime Minister had asked and initiated that process. Mm -hmm. In that meeting, he uh, actually said that this is the first time that the G20 is meeting on an issue that's neither economic nor financial. Yeah. It's meeting on a humanitarian issue. Yes. And he called for a human-centric globalization. Right. And that philosophy is there to stay. Under our presidency, for the first time, developed and developing countries have come together to work to create solutions for global challenges. Right. That we are seeing uh, the beginning of a new global order, which is based on a process of global collaboration. Right. Uh, we have had this peculiar uh, situation where even the use of Vasudev Kotumbakam has been objected to, but I'll not get into that. My second last question, uh, was it a sort of a logistics nightmare, if not a nightmare, a challenge to be holding this scale of event for the first time perhaps uh, uh, in our country and also the G20 summit for example, we did not have a convention center uh, matching the requirements and then we got one and uh, getting all these leaders, heads of state, heads of government, accommodating them and their delegations uh, we heard that President Biden perhaps is coming with three plane loads of his team. Uh, how was that experience? So, um, you know, as I said, planning started well before we took on the presidency. And that is why today we can sit back and say with the measure of confidence that we will have a summit that is be, that will be absolutely extraordinary. But the process in leading up to the summit has also been uh, quite uh, interesting from the point of view that we have broken new ground. We have gone, as I said, from you know, Kutch to, uh, to Kohima, and we've gone to all parts of our country. So from that perspective, I think working with local authorities to create infrastructure, to encourage urban transformations, beautifications, also capacity, enhancing capacity for, uh, you know, the requirements of the G20. And all of this is, uh, as I said, for a good uh, cause yeah. beyond the G20 because yeah. many of these cities today have the confidence and the capacity yeah. to host uh, major conferences and MICE events. Yeah. It has boosted tourism, it has showcased our developmental and, to, and uh, cultural uh, heritage capacities and I think it has done a world of good uh, to us as a country. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I would say that if there were any challenges in the process, they were worth Surmounting. Like like any anecdote on this Bharat Mandapam, how you went about it thinking that we need a convention center uh, which is needed immediately for G20 and then should be available for uh, India's uh, diplomatic engagements later as well. So here there was a lot of foresight because the construction of Bharat Mandapam started years ago and predates my time uh, both in the MEA and in this current position. Uh, I think it started uh, with the realization that it, you know we will host the G20 yeah. presidency. We need uh, a new uh, convention center because we don't have uh, those capacities that are required for such an in important international event. But also for the future, as the Prime Minister said when he inaugurated the Bharat Mandapam, that in our capital city we now have the capacity to hold major conferences and uh, this will hold us in very good stead in the future. Yeah. Uh, so Bharat Mandapam I think is a matter of pride for all Indians that yeah. it is a state of art uh, convention center. It is also linked to a number of uh, ancillary facilities and all of them have been upgraded substantially for the G20. Right. My last question to the diplomat in you. Uh, with this talk that President Jinping might not be coming, uh, does it impact outcome of the main summit in any manner or we are fine? First of all, I think uh, the question is speculative because we don't know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know for certain right. uh, who's coming and who's not coming. And whether, whether at all that issue is established, I'm not sure. But in, what is important is that we would have the heads of state and government uh, and uh, important uh, leaders of all of our G20 partner countries, NVT countries and international organizations. It would be an unprecedented gathering yeah. of the most influential and important world leaders uh, in our country. Right. Uh, it's, it's a very unique opportunity for us. Right. And certainly we will put it to the best use and the summit will be an extraordinary summit in keeping with our expectations of an impeccable right. and uniquely Indian right. G20. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Shingla, for joining us on this uh, special broadcast.